It's Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Mark from the States. How are we doing today? I am, of course, fantastic. I hope you are as well. I appreciate each and every one of all of you. I do. You guys are amazing. Come sit on this big fake couch. Let's learn about the city of Bradford. Uh, apparently, it's gone through a lot of changes over the years. And our good friend from Adventure Me, Darren, is going to take us on this journey to find out what has happened what went wrong, if you will? Um, I appreciate all of you coming, and maybe you'll learn something new today. You know I'm going to, and I, at least you'll email me and you know comment to help me uh, get some context or fill in the blanks of the stuff that I'm inevitably going to miss and all that wonderful things you do. So please come with me, and let's check out this wonderful video by Darren. And adventure me please go support his channel link will be in the description as always and let's check out the city of Bradford welcome to Bradford a city with over half a million population used to be one of the richest cities outside of London and it's my former hometown but what went wrong let's find out in this video So here we are on a cold winter's morning in Bradford. And as you can see, it looks gloomy, but a lot of people would say it always looks gloomy. Being born here, I see it completely differently. I see the good and the bad, but I wanna take a walk round and we're gonna start looking at things close up and trying to work out what went wrong over the years in Bradford and why it's in such a poor state today. I mean, a lot of people will be quick to blame the local council. And I'm not saying they're not to blame because there's been a lot of silly decisions over the years, over the decades, by the council in that building. But it's, it can't be the only thing that contributes to why Bradford has had such a downfall. And here we are outside the magnificent Bradford Town Hall, one of the most impressive buildings in the city. It is. There are quite a few others as well. It is a beautiful building. I will certainly agree with him there. It is pretty outstanding. Just, oh man, it's so nice. Towns, towns are um, cities. Uh, they do go through changes, I get that. And yeah, the city council will definitely have a, a serious effect on them based on policies or things that they decide to spend money on. A lot of factors, economics of the area. If they once had a uh, main, like if they were a mill town or, you know, that, uh, or some sort of factory that produced a certain thing that is no longer needed and it shuts down yeah the town towns and cities can go through a, a, a serious fluctuation and you you hope that the city council can can uh, certainly i'm not going to say foresee stuff but kind of be able to navigate through all those sort of economic uh troubles that can always uh you know, affect towns, villages, cities. It really doesn't matter what size you are, but uh, um, going, he says it was one of the richest cities outside of London. So, I mean, half a million people, that's, that's, a, lot, that's a lot. But to me, this signifies how much of a big city Bradford used to be and how prosperous it was when you see that the town hall is comparable in size to the one in Manchester and much bigger cities like that. Currently in Centenary Square, which is the section outside the town hall. And then just over here is what is known as City Park, which was a new development probably 15 years ago now, where they built a giant lake in the middle of the city center, closing off a major road through the center. I remember him building this at the time and thinking, why? But I've got to admit, 
it's very popular and a lot of people do like it but on days like today when it's cold and wet and miserable which is pretty much most days in the UK why do we need this kind of thing I'll just show you what I mean there's absolutely nobody here today it's not wow. even filled up with water so that gets filled up with water right there I've got to say every day that I've been down here to Bradford in the past 10 years I've rarely seen water in there it seems to be broken or empty more than it's used that I've only ever seen it at its best on a summer's evening when it's packed with people. Sure. What I've got to ask myself is this thing cost over 25 million pounds and it was paid for by the money from selling Leeds Bradford Airport. Because if you didn't know, Leeds, Leeds Council, Bradford Council and a couple of other West Yorkshire councils actually owned Leeds Bradford Airport and they sold it to a private company probably 15, 20 years ago now. And the pot of money that Bradford Council got was used to build this behind me. Now Leeds spent theirs on the Leeds Arena, which as we know, attracts hundreds and thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people every single month, which are spending money in hotels, restaurants and shops in the city center. I don't think this has the same appeal at all. You're not going to get people booking hotels and going to restaurants because of this. So I've got to say, as much as I do like it and when it's running, it looks good. It's a complete waste of money. And it's these kind of things, in my opinion, that Bradford Council have just gone wrong. They've, they want, they've gone for vanity projects, things that look nice, but don't actually have a purpose or bring any money in. Nothing worthwhile anyway. Now, I'm currently in front of the new building. I think it's called One City Park, which again was just built recently by the council. And they're hoping it's going to be taken on by a corporation being in a prominent spot right in the middle of City Park. Now, again, it looks nice. It's quite a nice looking building, very modern. And I don't think it's obtrusive. It's better than what was there before, but do we need more office space in the city? I mean, a couple of hundred yards over here, there's tons of office blocks that are completely empty and have been for donkey's years. Now I know that this is apparently a modern build, so it's energy efficient and all that sort of stuff, and the other ones aren't, but I still don't see the point in building more things like this. The money could be better spent on attracting people to Bradford again. Yeah, that's a decision the city council makes uh, that can affect tourism. Sure, I, I, I see the appeal in having the, well, I mean, to call it a lake is, I get it, it's going to fill up with water, but it's not, um, it'd be interesting to see what it looks like filled up with water, but it's too bad it becomes seasonal if they're not going to have it filled up with water all the time. Just in the summer months, uh, just when the temperature gets to a certain point. The arena that leads, of course, yeah, that's you can have all kinds of events there. Conventions, concerts, sports, um, shows, you know, anything, really. Um, so, yeah, that, that's always a, a win. When you do, when you build something like that, that is not going to be dictated based on the weather, on on its use. Outside of it, pretty to look at, and he said vanity project. So, um, outside of it being pretty to look at, or you know, what are the uses for that uh, lake in the in the middle of town there, middle of the city? Yeah, I could see the frustration of locals. Um, when, especially when they, if they rarely keep water in it. <laughs> um, wow. Building things that would bring people in to stay, like the museum or the Alhambra. Mm. Now we're gonna take a walk around the whole city and I'm gonna review <laughs> certain things because there's plenty of things further around that I do think the council have done right. 
Now as we head round the back oh, good. of City We're Park. It's not just a We get to what <laughs> used to be negative. Well, I remember thing. it as the Jacobs Well roundabout, which is obviously the roundabout above it up here. And this used to be one of the subways that went underneath and you could get to the museum, the library and all that sort of stuff. So I learned that subways, what I would call subway as a train, was what you would call the tube or whatever. Um, you call subways uh, pedestrian walkways under roads, so on and so forth. So I have learned that recently. Um, interesting. And hopefully he'll get into why it's blocked off here. It's been filled in quite recently because they're doing a new road project above it to clear up the roundabout. But again, hmm. did it need that doing? I don't think it did. You know, it, it's been working for probably 60, 70 years and it's been absolutely fine. But I bet you everything that that's going to cost a few million pounds. It won't be a few hundred pounds. As with anything with the council, it always costs 10 times more than <laughs> anyone else could get it for. I wonder if he's going to go into it, but I assume it's a lot like it is here. There's someone making money on this <laughs> and there's probably more than just someone. There's probably many people making money on these projects that city councils will link up with and or city governments of any size. Someone's always benefiting for these weird and unnecessary projects if you know if you want to consider them unnecessary and it's 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 one of the one of the uh you know dark side of capitalism and you know people inflate prices will pick projects to do even though as according to darren that they didn't need to be done they were working just fine, but they want to improve them and this, that, and the other. And of course, you know, there's going to be people that make a lot of money. It's unfortunate, but, you know, and, and a lot of it just goes unnoticed. You know, the, the, the average person isn't reading between the lines and, and really digging deep into a lot of it. They just say, oh, they're building something else and this is what my taxes are going to or... You know, they're not happy about it or they are happy about it. I don't know. But, yeah, city councils. Yeah, votes matter. Some of these projects that you see, something simple like, I don't know, building a little box on the back of a building and they get quoted four and or five million pounds for it. <laughs> and you think, well, I've just had something similar built in my garden for like mm -hmm. 20 grand. How do they get these inflated prices? I mean, we all know why they're inflated. And uh, brown envelopes being passed around, but that's councils in general. I've always wondered that, yep. and it always annoys me when I see that. But even if it is overinflated, it's still far too much money to be spending. And there's another one right opposite me here now. And that is the former NCP car park, which the council has owned for quite a few years now. And as you can see, it's been readied to be demolished. So they've got the uh, explosives already mounted inside, oh. as far as I'm aware, and it's gonna be imploded sometime very soon to make way for a new entrance way into the Bradford Interchange. So you'll be able to enter the station and the bus station this way, rather than walking round the back. Which again, I like the idea. Mm -hmm. I do think this is an absolute monstrosity, but it did bring an income into the city even though it's ugly. I mean, there's uglier buildings in Bradford, like the one right next to it. That's going nowhere, the Bradford Hotel, or what used to be the Hilton. That's going nowhere. But I do think, yes, it is an eyesore, but I bet that's costing many millions of pounds yet again. Now just look at how stunning the town hall looks. Even at the back end, it's really nice. Oh, wow, same building? And again, this, Jeez. the law courts, so... Looks good. I'm not sure if it's not the Crown Court, I think it's the law courts. This has always been hideous. Even as a kid, I remember the horrible frontage that it used to have with the horrible fountains. 
down there, or as my dad used to call it, the burst water main, because that's what it looked like. Thank God they got rid of that. Now they need to finish it and get rid of that. <clears throat> We're going to make our way back through Centenary Square, and then I'm going to head further into the city. And I'm just going to walk and talk about what I see. And I hope you're going to enjoy this uh, new style of video where I'm just going to vlog rather than be scripted or researched. I'm just going to wander and give my opinion on things. What's this say? Somebody promoting religion? Mm -hmm. I always remember that as a kid, walking around Bradford and seeing all these uh, religious fanatics. I mean, it's a beautiful looking square. Again. I'm still perplexed on how much water gets put in there. It doesn't look like there's a ton of water that gets filled in um, into that. But yeah, it's, you're like, why? <laughs> uh, it's too bad in, in the cold months they couldn't make it like an ice skating rink. Um, which would cost more millions and millions of pounds to be able to freeze ice and such. But um, these tree like needle things here. I wonder what these are. We got them all dotting around. Um, are they lights? Are they interesting? I mean, Doing I love the center harm, here. But I mean, the square don't agree looks with really cool. Past. Now this here is what I remember as, I used to call it the banana because it's shaped like a banana, but it, it replaced the, was it National and Provincial? It used to be here, then it was Abbey National. It was a huge tower block that was right there, which didn't look too bad, but mm, a lot of people preferred that to what's here now. However, I do think this is slightly better and it creates more of a town sort of vibe and a, an attraction because of all the restaurants and the weather spoons and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to resist calling it a Witherspoons, like a lot of people do. And that's one of my little annoyances. I get really annoyed <laughs> when people call it Witherspoons, as in the actress Reese Witherspoon. It's Weatherspoons with an E, not an I. <laughs> but yeah, that's a very popular Weatherspoons. Now, a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about City Square. And although I haven't seen any today, it's normally, they say, full of drunks hanging around here, especially mm. at night, frightening people and uh, begging for money and things like that, causing a nuisance, which doesn't help when this is supposed to be one of the major attractions in Bradford. Right. And uh, it's full of trouble and fighting and the police are always here, apparently. But I haven't seen that today. I have seen it in the past, though. Now, we're going to make our way through the banana block because I want That's to show you bummer. something. A bit of a hidden gem right behind it here. Just as we make our way through the banana building, past the many whiffs of weed that I can smell, <laughs> you'll see this appearing at the back here. Uh, which it's hilarious. I've got to admit, I've only been inside once in my Sun life. Bridge. And I am going to come back and Welcome promise to, the world to make a video pure on this because it is amazing. Imagination. And it's known as Sunbridge Wells. And this is a Sunbridge good example. Wells of what you can do with a good imagination and somebody who's got a bit of money to try do something. And I wish more people would support it because every more time open. I've seen it, it's been dead. But it is basically former underground cellars and basements that, go, that span quite a fair way across the back here, full of bars, restaurants, oh, as you can see on here. yeah. You've got La Taverna. That's awesome. Pizzeria, uh, Wallace Brewery. Rum and Champagne bar, plenty of different bars, a few shops as well, coffee booth, cocktail I'd be bar, hitting up that champagne it's bar. It's really nice in there, but I will save it for a future video because I really want to go in there and do it in detail. Oh, cool. So let's make our way further down Market Street and into Bradford and look at some of the good stuff and also some of the bad stuff and try figure out what happened. Now I know a lot of people blame it on the um, the decline in industry in Britain, which is probably a massive factor. Just got a whiff of weed again. And uh, back in the Industrial Revolution, 
when Bradford was massive in the wool trade, all the mills and factories and even alpaca wool, it was huge and Bradford was very, very rich. All these opulent buildings were built then and all these, we had MPs from here, we had you know, mansions, we had roads covered in mansions where all these huge mill owners lived and it was very, very prosperous and rich. Even before Leeds, I mean, Leeds was tiny compared to Bradford at the time. Oh, I've just seen a dirty rat walk right in front of me. Yeah. Anyway, it was massive. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all that changed when the industry disappeared to places like China and, uh, you know, other countries abroad where they could do it much cheaper. And uh, that <sighs> seemed to sort of take a dive from then onwards. Now, it's not just then that it changed because I remember even back in the 80s and early 90s when I used to come to Bradford how much better it was then than it is now I mean it looks more modern now but is it better probably not it used to be bustling I remember coming here on a Saturday shopping and it was absolutely packed now even on a busy day it's quiet if you head into Leeds at the same time it will be really busy and that's the difference these days. So it's not just something that happened 200 years ago or 100 years ago, it's something that's been building gradually over many decades. So we're just currently on Tyrrell Street, heading towards one of my favorite buildings in Bradford. I love and this one of my least little... favorite, which is up there. Like and, it's uh, like a five smell. points kind of a thing here. Hot dogs and fried onions. Can't beat that smell. All these streets come together here. And uh, now one of the uh, modern oh, projects wow, they did in Bradford was to uh, replace all the paving with this lovely Italian stone, apparently. And I must admit, it looks really looks nice. Good. Very modern. And then the utility companies come around and uh, dig it all up and uh, <laughs> leave big patches of tarmac everywhere like this, which just ruins it. Why the council don't insist that they put it back, I don't know. But anyway, down to one of my favorite buildings in Bradford, and that's the Wool Exchange, which is right here. Now, it is a solicitor's and a Waterstones nah. bookstore. And quite a few people have described it as their favorite Waterstones ever, because it is beautiful inside. So it retains the all the original nice. architecture in there. And the building itself is absolutely stunning. And it's the kind of thing that Bradford should really, really work hard to make use of and preserve. We'll just check out the interior oh, wow. of this building. It is that nice. roof alone is absolutely amazing. And then you come down to the bookstore itself. Okay. I was wondering what a Waterstones was, and uh, it's kind of like we have what's called a Barnes and Nobles. It's yeah, it's the same thing, same premise, book retail. Uh, bookseller really cool and it is so picturesque the lovely mezzanine coffee shop up there as well yeah what a beautiful building it's things like this makes you realize how rich Bradford was mm. let's go take a look at the front of the building which I think is probably its best feature Again, shame they don't actually use this entrance and then they put tacky signs on like that. A salon with a flashing, horrible LED sign. And that's the front? It's disgusting. Right on the front of this beautiful building. It's that kind of thing the council should clamp down on instantly and stop it and that ask them to nice. remove it. And let's have a little pan up. Just check out this uh, lovely little frontage. I always used to love walking past this and thinking how grand it was. Yeah. Especially. That is nice. I mean, to be fair, the, the, the one on the sun, down the street here um, is it, it's nice as well. I mean, but it would. This is pretty cool. It just you can tell this is not a new town. <laughs> New city. It's been here a while. I lo I'm loving the architecture of it, though. Now, when there's not many of these kind of buildings left, and then we pan to the left side, 
and you see right opposite <coughs> that awful thing. I think that's been there since the 60s. And I'm told it used to have a roof garden just to the side over here, which apparently is still there, up there. Mm. You can see some trees up there. But it used to be um, a bustling office block and shopping center. Now there's a couple of shops at the bottom and it looks completely empty at the top. And it just blocks the views of this beautiful building. It's the kind of thing that Bradford and, well, many other cities, not just Bradford, was famous for doing, blocking in your assets and building monstrosities. Now, right opposite here is the new Broadway shopping centre, which Bradford did need. It was lacking in a shopping centre, a decent one anyway, and shops. So I was kind of glad when it was announced and they decided to build it finally, after many years of talking about it, but not actually doing it. But is it the most beautiful looking building? Absolutely not. Is it nice? It's okay. Other than that, it looks like a metal shed with cladding on it, which is in effect <laughs> what it is. <laughs> now, I used to run a Facebook page for the construction of the Broadway. So I used to run the actual admin of it, and I used to uh, put construction pictures on when they were building it all those years ago. And I actually got a private tour around it when they were building the shopping centre. And I remember being up on the roof and walking around before it, well before it opened anyway. And uh, I wish I was vlogging back then because I would have filmed it all, but I wasn't then. It was literally just a couple of pictures that I took. As we head up towards Manor Row, I think it is. You've got the, again, the beautiful bank building for the Barclays, which still looks good today. And then right over there, we've got the Midland Hotel, which was the former Hotel for the Midland Station, or Foster Square Station, whatever you want to call it. And I will be back very soon to cover this, to keep your eyes peeled on the channel, because it is one of my other projects I want to do in Bradford, along with a few other things as well. You can see how opulent Manor Row is, apart from a couple of new buildings from the 60s and 70s that are kind of sandwiched in between, which are not very nice. And then we'll head up this way towards one of the biggest monstrosities in Bradford when it was built and now and it's still standing for now I have been told the good news apparently Bradford Council have bought the Kirkgate Shopping Centre or the Arndale as I used to call it and they are about to uh, kick everybody out and demolish the whole thing which would be the best thing they could do it's very quiet these days. It's not very pretty to look at. It is a massive eyesore. And I'm also gonna show you a new development up here as well. Can't have anything in cities these days, can you? That probably cost 200 grand for that little stone plinth in council money. And then somebody just walks along and destroys it. And you can bet that'll cost probably 50 grand to repair and it would cost me a couple of hundred quid but there's a council for you but as you can see on the Kurgate it says there look closing down and a lot of the uh, signs are saying the same in the other windows so yes this is all going to be completely demolished and what's going to replace it I have absolutely no idea I'm hoping some green space maybe, or even some kind of modern complex or some other attraction to bring people in. I mean, that would have been a perfect spot for an arena kind of building. But they missed the boat on that because Leeds has got one now and everybody's gonna go to that one instead. Shall we head inside? I've not been inside the Kirkgate for years. Let's go in. Now I'm going to have to be uh, incognito in here because I've heard that the security in here are quite hands-on, shall we say. And they're not a fan of people recording. But I'm ready. <laughs> and I'm going to try my best to get as much footage as I can inside. Well, I've not been in here for many, many years. I remember spending a lot of time upstairs 
at Argos and when it used to be Little Woods and Index, remember Index, the old catalogue shop. I used to always buy all my uh, latest games and things in there and I used to go to uh, the jewellery shop upstairs and buy new earrings because I had a, a stud in my ear, I used to change it all the time. I remember, well, I've still got one in my ear, but I remember the uh, old bakery upstairs as well, which was known as the, uh, what was it called, Baker's Oven. Now it's a Greg's, which is, seems to be the prominent thing, but I always remember it being much bigger in here. I think it's just because I'm older, it looks really, really small. But let's head upstairs. Now the escalator's out of order, so I'm going to have to get the lift up. No, I'm not going to bother with that. They're cramming everybody into a lift and there's like a huge queue just to get in the lift to go upstairs, which just seems daft. But you're cutting all your uh, customers off. And the staircase is right around the other side, so I'm not going to bother with that. Nothing to see up there anymore anyway, but a sign of things to come. Everything closing down. Like these empty units here. Now, I remember this, and I remember some of the shops that used to be here back in the early days. Yeah, it looks so much smaller now than it used to. I do think it's just because I've got older. And it is a sorry state in here now. And uh, along with all these units outside here as well, which have always looked disgusting and still do. These old um, ugly shops here and uh, signs, which are just horrible, cheap and tacky, like all those horrible frontages. And I've always said again, why the council don't clamp down on what your frontage is like? I mean, I presume they have to apply for planning permission for signs, and I know they do, but they never seem to do anything about it or it gets passed. And I don't know why, because they're absolutely disgusting. You just need to come along and rip them all down. Or even if they could have like a uniformed pattern or colour, a bit like Harrogate when you go there, a lot of their signage on the buildings is standard. They have the same gold lettering and black signs on the front of the buildings and it looks really classy. And then you come to somewhere like this and it's just full of tacky flashing lights and tacky signs and different colours and different sizes, different fonts. I mean, for instance, again, flashing lights in the window, which I always think make something look really tacky. And the same over there on that one. Now this building here was the old, tacky, uh, yeah. if I remember rightly, the Rawson Fish Market. I remember it used to stink when you walked past it as a, when I was a kid anyway. I used to hold my nose walking down there because of the smell. And this frontage was kept from the original building, which was nice to see. And the building behind it is all brand new. But again, it's a lot of steel, plastic and cladding on the other side, which doesn't go at all. And then they kept this side as well, which wasn't the prettiest to look at either. But a lot of the shops in there now, and again, that was only built probably 20 years ago. A lot of vape I stores. With a yeah. few big stores and that. Even that now, state of that. Just random rubbish piled up right on the main shopping thoroughfare. Lovely. And uh, yeah, a lot of the businesses in there have closed down now. I know the other side, the Wilco's is gone. And I remember the uh, toy shop that used to be here. I think it was Toy Master. Used to always go in there buying my bikes and things. Yeah, we're coming up to the top end of the city now, which in my opinion is the worst area in the city because there's very little of architectural merit up here. Very little history left and everything is just run down and neglected. Again, very much like the Osla shopping centre right there, which used to be, to me, the uh, Bradford Market, that's what we used to call it, with the ugly car park on top of it. I remember <clears throat> getting stuck in those lifts in that car park when I was a kid and panicking. 
my uh, dad went down the stairs. I said, I'm going to get in the lift, press the button. It stopped halfway down and didn't move. Couldn't <laughs> open the door. I remember screaming and banging on the door. Can't get up, can't get up. So I have memories of things like that. But back then, this was quite a nice market. It had a very bustling scene. I mean, it used to be crowds gathering outside the doors. And it had the big Morrisons here as well. And all the shops in there were unique. And I remember it having uh, loads of little cafes and little quirky shops in there. But I mean, I think we should go and have a look. But I think now it's just going to be full of the same old tat and yeah, not very nice. Let's go have a look. But I do know again, I'm told this is coming down. They're going to flatten all of this, including the car park. Probably one of the good decisions again. But how many millions and millions is that costing? And what are they going to replace it with? That's my question. I remember the uh, cafe that used to be here. Now, that smell when you come in of the fruit and veg, it takes me right back. Now, here's the cafe on this side. I remember Fountain's Coffee House. That's always been there as far as I can remember. Still got the original 70s sign up there, look. Yeah, it was always busy in there. But I do remember another one on that side as well. I remember the roof in here being quite unique, but not as good as the Leeds Kirgit Market, oh, which has cool. the old Victorian <laughs> interior. But I remember the original roof had like a pattern in it. Now it's just a generic steel frame, really. Oh, interesting. I'm told that the reason it's so quiet in here these days and not very good is that the council have outpriced a lot of the units in here probably to shift them on because they want to demolish it or have an excuse uh. to demolish it or they just got greedy and decided to charge extortionate rents and rates because there was a market in the Kirgate centre as well which is also closed down but I will show you their solution shortly to replace both markets. Yeah, as you can see, not very uh, imaginative anymore. Anyway, let's head outside and down and look at some of the more unique stuff that's popping up in Bradford. Now, one of the most controversial buildings in Bradford has got to be this one, known as High Point. And uh, I remember some people being a fan of it and some people absolutely hating it and I think the, the thing is because you can see it across the whole city you can see it right from the middle and as you're entering the city because it's at the highest point in Bradford Centre and it's also one of the highest buildings hence it being called High Point okay but yeah I mean it is <laughs> Makes sense. what I would call a carbuncle <laughs> it's what? not horrible well it is horrible <laughs> It's not picturesque, but I think with a bit of imagination, it could look okay. And they seem to be doing a lot of work on it at the minute. I know that they're creating apartments in there because the, all the new windows have been replaced and they're all new now. And this new frontage down here. So it looks like they're trying to do something with it. Yeah, I mean, Again, it does this look junction terrible. is probably one of the worst junctions in Bradford. And it's also just grotty, isn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> but before we yeah. head back down into the centre and look at one thing, I want to just head up here on what is known as North Parade. Because this is this had a bit of promise a few years ago and apparently it still does. So we're heading down the back of the uh, market or the Oster Centre with that horrible car park up there and down to North Parade, which had a bit of a resurgence about 10 years ago. A lot of trendy bars and sort of restaurants opened up on this road down here and I, don't know, I think a few of them have gone now but the, quite a few have reopened again and it seems to be having a bit of a, a rejuvenation in itself and apparently the, all this here is brand new as well all been redone to modernize it which again is not a bad thing but how many millions did that cost and I've also done the whole of North Parade now, my argument for this street was why, if it's so good and vibrant, why not close it off completely, pedestrianise it like a lot of places do abroad? Yes. They never seem to do it over here. 
yeah, there's a couple of, uh, sort of trendy bars and pubs down that side. I remember there being a, a ham and record shop down here. I don't know if that's still here, which sold different hams and uh, you could browse records and listen to them, which is quite unique. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be uh, that much in the way of things on here anymore. There is a really nice bar there. Uh, there's one behind me, uh, one just up there, I think, and that's about it. I'm sure there was more. It's a bit far out of the city centre, but I think that was the whole point. It was meant to be away from the centre. But also, a bit like uh, if you look at Manchester, they've got the Northern Quarter, which is like the old section at the top, which just kind of took a life of its own and uh, became a really modern, sort of trendy place to be. We've got this place here, rewired. I don't know what that is. Bar club, maybe. Yeah, a lot of nice shops. I mean, the frontages are much better up here, I must admit. They're a lot more classier, stylish. It is nicer. And I do like the new... The, it looks like it's uh, more original architectural like I said, from, it should be. They want to make something of it. From earlier points in nice time. shop frontage. If they want to make something of it, it needs to be... King's name. Pedestrianised. Why they don't do it, I don't know, but how nice is that shop? We've done that here in in my town, blocked off our main street that has all the restaurants and bars, and it's been fantastic doing that. Um, I, I do see a lot of vape shops, um, a lot of cell phone, whether it's repair or sales or something to do with your mobile phone. Um are, are dominating the landscape and those are usually the stores that come in after the original you know niche store uh, has left because going out of business or moved or whatever uh, we we see it even in my town Ventura in areas that people don't frequent as much those are the kind of stores that usually pop in and this is not uh, too <clears throat> different than a lot of places here just in California. Um, city councils do make bad decisions or you know but sometimes it's out of their out of their uh, hands they're, they're not responsible they, there's nothing they can do. Uh, I'm sure the population has changed so I, I do see a lot of uh, hijab women wearing hijabs. No problem there, but it's just you're going to have um, what they need, uh, what caters to them, are going to start to be become more important. And so stores, which you know existed in the 1670s, are no longer needed anymore because of the uh, the population of the city has changed, or at least just the area here that he's in. Um, so, you know, little, uh, you know, what some bars and restaurants probably don't fly with certain populations and, you know, so things are going to change and move and cities will fluctuate and that, you know, you see that everywhere. That's not unique to, to Bradford or wherever, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, uh, a lot, there's a lot of, a, a lot of cause and effect for sure. And you, you do need to, um, if you can, uh, get people on the city council who have that forethought to think ahead and plan. But I, I do like the idea of tearing down some things that are just eyesores. Um, figure out where that market can maybe move to uh, temporarily or permanently and, you know, try to revitalize it the city, if, as long as it's not a historical national landmark, of course, you know me, but um, yeah, I can see it. It's uh, That's what you call a classy looking shop. And yeah. uh, can you imagine if the street was full of shops like that? Yeah. And the quality of signage on the front. Tattoo nice place. And pedestrianized with tables and chairs. Yeah. All outside. Okay, so we're gonna head further down, back into Bradford again. And I'm going to show you something just down here, which has a bit of promise for the future of Bradford, hopefully. Now I want to come back to Bradford 
for a couple of videos, railway related, as I said a bit later on. But there's also, I want to make another one of these types of videos and I'm going to show you all the good stuff in Bradford. And I'm going to go around and show you all the positive regeneration and plans for things in the future. While we're here, let me just show you what I was talking about earlier, the back of Rawson Market when they redid it into this modern um, like fake blocks and plastic and glass. I mean, look at the state of it now. You wouldn't believe this is like 10, 15, well, 20 years old, I think. You wouldn't believe it when you look at it. it looks like something from the 1930s, honestly. Everything's filthy, neglected, grimy, closed. Yeah, you wouldn't know. I think I preferred what was here before, to be honest. Well, if it and was that was bad, and they replaced it with doing this well, the of rejuvenating it, it take it clearly didn't work. It's just it would take more over. effort to. Yeah, now Wilco's is gone as well. It's just yeah, there's nothing cool. there. It's sad. And there are some gems in Bradford still. Some of the businesses that are still thriving. A bit like these independent coffee shops and I love that. The small I love bars coffee. and things like that. There are a few coffee of them dotted around. But majority of the city is now betting shops, charity shops, the usual drivel that you find in a dying city these days. Right. Betting I think shops. Leeds being the newer city compared to Bradford. Betting shops, so you can go and place bets, wagers on uh sports and stuff. I'd heard about that. <laughs> I heard that there were places like that. Uh, we don't have, uh, uh, gambling is illegal pretty much everywhere. Um, unless it's on an Indian reservation, um, for us doing what we did to the native Americans. Um, the government has allowed them to make money on gambling and to help with the reservation and the tribe and all that wonderful stuff, uh, which is truly needed for a lot of the Indian tribes, need money to to help them out for sure. Um, and the casino is a an amazing way to to bring in revenue. Um, but it's and then of course Las Vegas, Nevada, this the the state of Nevada has legalized gambling. New Jersey, I believe. No, no, no. Atlantic, yeah, Atlantic City, but only in Atlantic City, I believe. You have uh, legalized gambling. Everywhere else where they allow sports betting online um, to where you can place bets. Um, not legal here, though, where I live. Um, we do have horse racing, which is legal. Um, we have a, an off track betting place. Um, Ah, actually, you know what? That's not true. There's also a, a card club, what they call a, a casino, but it's a card club. It's not like slot machines or anything, but they do play like blackjack and stuff like that. So you can gamble. There's always like little loopholes. You know, there's loopholes everywhere. But with that said, I'm um, getting going off on a tangent. Uh, you, you do see, and even here in my town, you see. You know, places that were once popular when I was a child that are now kind of eh, in, a, in these lower end type businesses are in there because they're getting rent, you know, real cheap to uh, let that space. And uh, it's, a, it's a shame. But, yeah, towns and cities have to figure out a way to fluctuate um, and navigate the ups and downs of the economics, for sure. It just seems to have always had its head in the game and uh, spent the money where it was needed and on the right things. And at the same time, pulled in the punters and kept them, kept them coming for decades. Now here's what I want to show you down here, but I will take a closer look at this in the future video because I, I don't want to show you too much but this is Bradford Council's brand new market which they're building on the former 
what used to be Marks and Spencer's, the huge Marks and Spencer's department store that was there. Did my work experience in there. Just at the side of the Kirkgate entrance here. Yeah, it's going to be on multiple levels, apparently. Have a massive, like, artisan food court inside and market stalls. They're going to try and make it like a modern market as opposed to the usual older ones which just sell the same sort of stuff. And uh, it's going to have a big outdoor terrace at the top there as well, which will be nice in summer. And a public square down there for bands and things, right in front of it, which they seem to be doing. Yeah, it looks pretty decent from outside. I mean, it's a long way off finished yet, although it looks nearly finished. Apparently it's not going to open until later this year, but yeah, we'll come back and take a closer look at that later on. And that's the uh, hope for the future for Bradford, apparently. Whether it's going to be an absolute waste of money, white elephant, I do not know. Will people, is it too late? Is it li too little too late and people are just going to not go because Bradford's dying or died? Or is it going to be the start of something new? It's now a couple of hours later from when I last spoke to you and it's getting dark, being winter and all. But that's not a problem for me with this new camera. Like I say, it's amazing at night. So I've been dying to do that anyway. But I did go for a, a coffee and ended up catching up with uh, some, a fan of the channel, shall we say, and uh, ended up having a two hour chat and. An, uh, coffee in a coffee shop, Tiffin Coffee by the way, which was very nice and uh, the staff were very polite in there and uh, I thought well I need to carry on with my video but it is now dark but that's no bother so where was I? Well I don't know, I've forgotten <laughs> so we took a look at the top end of town and how it's kind of gone down the pan a little bit and lost its way and we're back down the, what I would call the more I wouldn't say modern but more um, I'm trying to look for the right word. Better looking or modern-ish. Let's walk into the giant lake anyway, get my feet wet. Oh wait, no, it's empty. So if you haven't seen um, this basin here in action, it's actually really good once it's on. I mean, it fills and empties on its own. So all the water is actually stored underneath in a huge tank or a reservoir and it gets pumped to fill up and they can fill it as a lake all the way around or they can have it as just little shallow pools. They can also do mist effects from the fountain nozzles which are situated all over the floor like this one. That's an actual uh, 200 foot fountain I think. And then they've got the smaller ones all the way around which are quite well hidden and I'm shivering as I'm talking because it's absolutely freezing. I must say the city park building looks okay at night. But anyway, I'm gonna head over to the other side. I mean, to be honest, I mean, that sounds amazing with the fountains and to be able to control the water and, and everything he was just talking about that I mean yeah I could see why they chose that project <clears throat> but I can also see why it's not helping with the city because people aren't it's not while awesome to look at and see every once in a while it's not bringing people there people aren't traveling to go there to visit this <laughs> you know so I could see for longtime residents people who have history of Bradford to be upset I, I do I do because it's like while it looks great <laughs> um, and, and just I imagine that the main the maintenance of it is quite quite expensive as well of the city park just to show you a couple of good assets for Bradford, shall we say. So firstly, you've got the Science and Media Museum over there, which has always been a good asset for Bradford. So much that a lot of other cities were very jealous of that because it used to be the most 
visited museum outside of London at one point and it was I think the first IMAX in the UK and the f one of very few in the world and also I think the largest not anymore but when it opened in the 80s it was and it was quite a draw to Bradford and one of my favourite buildings is the Alhambra Theatre which believe it or not I've done a couple of shows in there over the years I think I did one in the 90s and before he continues on now this is the area that I would if I were city council and it's easy for me to just say yeah I want to do stuff here because you know it's all make-believe and uh, but yeah if that museum looks pretty awesome of course this theater is cool looking um, and it does look here in the middle that they're gonna they're building and doing something maybe gonna widen the road or and it looks like maybe on the other across the street there's something going on but yeah if they can build this area up for sure that would be something to come see um, and like he said it was very popular at one point but that's the thing you can't you can't get stagnant you always got to come up with new ideas it's but cities are going to go through it up and down you know London is going to go through it but it's just London is London so you're not going to see it people are still going to come regardless and uh, I mean London looks awesome right plus so but these smaller cities are all going to have you know their ups and downs it just goes with the territory um, two th early 2000s I've been on that stage so I can say I've done it, tick. And then right mm. over here, we've got what I call the Odeon, but it was uh, the Gormont and the new Victoria, I think, in its early years. Nice. It's now under construction or restoration, should I say, and it's gonna be opened as Bradford Live, which is gonna be a new big music venue. Oh, which, cool. Again, a very positive thing for Bradford. Yes. And will, I think, help in rejuvenating its nightlife at least alongside the Alhambra so I've been told or I read online it's due to open sometime in uh, 2024 I think it's autumn 24 so some point this year fingers crossed and it will be run by the I think it was the NEC group who run the big concert venues in Birmingham and that's uh, that sort of thing and I think Ooh. it's about uh, uh, three and a half, four thousand capacity in there, which is like a mid sized venue. But I'd love to get in there. If anyone from Bradford who can get me in there, hit me up. I would love very much to do a history video on that building, especially now a lot of it is exposed. But yeah, looking at this side of Bradford, I mean, it is very pretty here. It is, it is it's what I would call a nice. Central Square. Park. And it's right across the street again, from those Leeds hasn't museum. Got They've got Millennium Square, yeah, which is concert a Concert venues, theatres. I do think a lot of cities need some sort of central point. But it's not enough. So back to my original question. What happened in Bradford? Going from the richest city outside of London it was very rich to one of the most oh one of the poorest cities he sounds ever very cool <laughs> poverty levels going through the roof and you know homelessness and Careful. dereliction and <laughs> people deserting in their droves what went wrong i just don't know <laughs> that's the problem i don't think there's a single issue i think it's multiple things over decades that have just contributed towards it one being like they said the industry disappearing mm -hmm. the um, the classes moving to London probably as well didn't help the council decisions um, the crap that we built in the 60s the concrete stuff which meant that we demolished all these beautiful buildings to build these carbuncles and and I didn't mention it earlier but carbuncles the 60s building right next to 
uh, the Broadway Centre. I forgot to mention, but that replaced a beautiful building called the Swan Arcade, which, which was very much like what you have in Leeds today with the beautiful Victorian arcades. They demolished that to build that. Again, that was taken in the 50s and 60s. But yeah, I don't, I just can't put my finger on it. But what I do know about Bradford is it is forgotten. And I think yeah. being right next to Leeds, which has kind of gone from a small sort of, uh, what's the word, a small dwelling, you know, over a hundred years ago to a major, major city now, nearly a million people in it. I think that has kind of swallowed Bradford up because Bradford is literally right next door. A bit like Manchester and Salford where everyone just calls it Manchester now when it isn't. And I think it's the same for here. Everyone just says Leeds and Bradford just gets ignored because it's mm. so close. But at the it's same lost time, its identity. Yeah, there's uh, not much yeah. difference between them. Although I do think Bradford is older and it looks older which is a good thing because you've got a lot more of the old style buildings. Leeds is a lot more modern. And I think that's one of Bradford's strengths is that it's different to Leeds in that way. But Leeds has also kept a lot of their original buildings like the Victorian arcades. Bradford does kind of get overlooked and uh, it doesn't have anything that stands out really. And you normally only see the bad news on TV about Bradford, so uh -huh. I don't really know what we can do about it. Is it too close to Leeds to really stand out? Probably. I'm just walking past the former, what used to be the Telegraph and Argus building. If you remember the newspaper nice. in Bradford, it's now like any other newspaper done from a central point somewhere, probably in London or something like that. And uh, the offices are derelict. And then you've got the other side of Broadway there. Which again, like I say, it, it was needed in Bradford, but is it the most picturesque building? No. <laughs> and then you've got things like this, which I don't want to go into too much detail about right now. I will be back very, very soon to cover this and what it was what it used to be should I say I'm sure a lot I'm of you intrigued. already know what it was but uh, I need to do a deep dive into it don't I Looks like a, back into some of the like old stations and castle. things I've never done Whoa. any in Bradford <laughs> well in the centre anyway and I've got three to do three big ones anyway like I say I hope you enjoyed this I did. different yeah. style of video Thank where you, I buddy. am literally vlogging so I'm walking and talking and giving my opinions on things and you're going to see it pretty much as I film it. So if anything happens in these videos, mm -hmm. you'll see it. Mm -hmm. If I fall over, you'll see it. If somebody, oh, somebody abuses me, you'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't wanna, I want these to be completely different to my usual documentary sort of uh, history style videos. But I wanna give an opinion on things. I wanna say things and, you know, do what I want. And that's the whole idea with this. Like I said, I will be back to do um, the future of Bradford because there is a lot of projects and developments going on currently. And we're gonna take a closer look at them. And also back to do these stations and whatever else is around here. Because I've got a lot of projects to do in Bradford and I think I've just come up a dead end. Uh, no, maybe I can get through. It's all fenced off for construction work. Mm. Maybe I can sneak round the fence here. I'm hoping anyway. I mean, the Premier Inn, that is not a nice looking building, is it? And I haven't mentioned Little Germany, which is up there. But I will cover that in a future video because there was a lot going on up there. And it's also full of history and is still well used today. Anyway, I'm going to try sneak up here somehow. Oh no, there is a footpath. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to leave you and see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed. Thank you 
uh, Darren, uh, please go support his channel. It's really, really important that you do so. This is, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting expose into your city. Um, there's a lot of reasons why it could fail or, or it seemed like it's failing. Changes in demographics, changes in uh, the economics, changes in the industry, changes uh, in outside factors like Leeds becomes, you know, uh, Leeds has a, a football club. Does Bradford have a football club? Um, I think is probably one of the reasons why I've heard of Leeds over Bradford. Of course, I'm not, you know, the target that they're trying to draw in, but still, um, I think lead, I think, uh, uh, Bradford should certainly, uh, lean into the fact that they're older than Leeds to differentiate, to separate themselves from them, um, and, and play to their strengths, uh, which is, uh, if they're, if they are indeed older, their history, um, the architectural, um, try to keep as much as the originals and build on that square with the lake. See if you can add things to it to make it more of a draw. You've got the, the, uh, uh, that nice museum, um, across the street you have uh, along with the, those theaters and yeah, make it a, it may not be a, uh, excuse me, uh, a, uh, like a weekend destination, um, but certainly for the evening and start there. And yeah, it's just, it's tough. It really is tough. Right now it's not, um, you're not going to, you, you, we see it here. Even in my town of Ventura, you're going to see a lot of big changes, a lot of lower end kind of, you know, shops that will come in, vape, mobile phone, you know, tattoos. We've got a lot of tattoo parlors. You know, when the, when the rent space and the rent price gets cheap enough because nobody shops there, then you're going to see a lot of those kind of businesses come in. And it, that happens all over the world. So, yeah, it's tough. It's tough, especially if it's your old town. And, I, I you know, I want to kind of cruise around my town because I grew up here. So uh, it's you'll see the same thing for sure. But thank you so much, Darren. Please, everyone, go support uh, uh, Darren on his channel. Link, of course, will be in the description. And... Uh, Hope everybody's happy, healthy, and safe. Uh, let me know uh, if you've been to Bradford. If you know of Bradford and Leeds, maybe you can um, show uh, you know or explain what your feelings are uh, on the uh, differences between the two places or if Leeds really even has anything to do with Bradford and its fluctuating uh, situation, I guess. Um yeah, let me know. Hope everybody has a great day, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Mark from the States, Mark from the States, it's Mark, and he's from